See how fuel just drips out of there right onto that? That's not good. Hello, you guys and gals. Welcome back. Yay, Corvettes. Woo! All right, so what are we going to do today? What are we going to do today? We are going to change out the fuel pump. Yay. Obviously, it's not on this side of the car. So let's go over here to the left front, or the right front, I should say, of our motor. Now, right down in here, oops, if I can do this without uh, screwing things up. Ooh, okay, so there's our fuel pump right there. That's the fuel pump. These are the fuel lines. The big line is the line coming into the fuel pump. And the small line is the return line going back to the fuel tank. So I need to disconnect both of those and I will be replacing these old, very, very, very hard hoses. <laughs> I don't even want to try to flex those because they're probably going to break. Now there's some secrets to doing this job. Um, the first secret is in order to do it, you got to take that wheel off. So. I don't have a whole lot of room right here, but I do think I have enough space to actually get this done, so um, I'm going to do it where it is. However, I do need to or want to do something before I do this job. And I will try to get the camera down in here to show you what I'm talking about. And you see all the grunge and grime and oil and crap all over? under here. I think it's time to clean that. So I am going to spend some time today starting before I do this job. I'm going to clean this all off under there. I hope that that leakage is from uh, the old valve cover gaskets because they were leaking pretty badly. As you can see under here, there's quite a bit of grunge still into there so I'm gonna spray some grease remover and use a brush and whatnot and some water to kind of clean this all up first before I start working on it because I like things clean and grunge on a motor is bad um, you get enough of that on there and you have a layer of insulation that's gonna heat your motor a little bit more and, and stuff like that so Anyway, that's going to be my first task of the day with this. Now, this is no advertisement, and I don't even know if this stuff exists anymore, but 15 years ago, I bought like 12 of these, a case of these, because they were like a dollar a piece, and that stuff is amazing. So, I'm just going to spray that on the block and uh, under there and around the fuel pump, and then I'm going to scrub it a little bit with this very soft bristled brush very soft so I'm not gonna probably take off too much really heavy grunge with this but but that's okay I just want to get the majority of the wet greasy oiliness off of there in order to get this uh, fuel pump out of there she's right down in there I think we're gonna have to take this wheel off actually that is the best way to go so I've jacked her up and I need to probably put something under the front to have uh, just as a safety precaution. Um, but for right now, oops, just going to um, get this wheel off. And once I do that, then ta -ting! Then I can start um, working on the fuel pump. So I'm going to put those in there. Put that over there. We'll get this out of the way. Okay, now that that's out of the way, we can see the fuel pump. Uh, or not. <laughs> you can kind of see it, but. If you look through here, see that bolt right there? That is going to be the first bolt we remove. And 
I'm going to use that bolt over here in this hole. I hope I'll get a better shot of that. I thought I had a, uh, a coolant leak because I just discovered coolant puddled here. So I thought, oh great, it must be this. See how, see how close that is? I gotta, I gotta fix that. This is, this hose is just too long. Obviously there's a problem there. Um, when I first put that heater hose on, it rubbed and there's a rub spot, but that is not what's leaking. What I've discovered the problem is, is actually this guy. This goes right to here. So here's where we are. Overflow tank. Let me flip this around this way. Overflow tank drizzles out right there. So when she gets hot and she overflows, she's leaking and drips right onto this. Great. That's a dumb idea. So what I'm gonna do is remove this big old piece of hose and find something better and a better way to route that. Um, theoretically, it shouldn't be overflowing at all, but as you can see, as you can see, it has overflowed and it's gotten all over everything, so yay. So never a dull moment, right? Uh, with a car like this, of this age, always running into a little something. My goal is to make it so that I don't have problems like that cropping up, um, but it's not easy. Sometimes things are just as they are. Also, I believe I have now discovered why she was idling so strangely, and that was because these guys, you can't, uh, yeah, you can tell on this one. See this, some of this is grease, like here, but that right there is scorch marks, this one and this one. So there's a very good chance that this, or this one, because this one has them too, was these were running underneath in the original spot. And today, as I was cleaning, I just pulled them out and reconnected them. And it turns out that she's running a lot better. <laughs> so I kind of suspect that... Um, yeah, that those wires were probably shorting out and causing it to uh, idle weird. So, anyway, that's that. Now, next on the agenda is to clamp this hose off right there so that it doesn't leak on me or here, maybe. I hope it doesn't just start leaking because these hoses are not too flexible anymore, especially that one. Uh, this is not going to be a fun project. I also need to make sure we're at TDC, so I, I still need to do that. Uh, that should help. That's going to be a challenge though. Um, probably best way to do that is just to check to make sure that's on cylinder one, so and have to disconnect that. Oh yeah, one of you guys suggested that um, that I just unplug power to the distributor. This plug here, oh, that one right there, that plug. Uh, I could just do that, I guess, but I have a hard time with plugging and unplugging plugs simply because uh, I I don't like to do that because they tend to get worn out or break so I don't know I'm not probably not even gonna rotate the motor very much it's probably nowhere near TDC though okay so I probably should have raised this up and cleaned in here a little better but I'm not going to worry about that too much. I'm just going to leave it as is. Here's the fuel pump. As you can tell, she's old. She has paint on her, too, from the engine paint. So I know that that is at least 30 years old. So definitely time to replace it. Um, I uh, 
have a few things here. So I have I have this to catch any gas that comes drizzling out of there. I'll have to get my light out of the way so it doesn't explode in my face or something. Um, and then I have these guys, which I'm going to use to clamp that off. Hopefully it doesn't just destroy the hose. Um, I have heat shrink tubing on there that I, I've used these for other things that I didn't want to scratch. So I just put some heat shrink on there. Um, I'm just going to leave it. should be okay, I think. Um, and then I have this nice big bolt that should fit in there and uh, that will be easier to contend with than uh, trying to deal with the uh, vice grips hanging off of there. So the next step is to disconnect the supply line. Um, also, by the way, I do have the car jacked up and then I have this ramp just, it's just sitting in here. It's a safety precaution, just in case the, uh, the just in case this little guy gives out. Um, so, first up is to block this off. I discovered this is rubbing on the frame as well, so that's bad. Disconnect it, put the bolt in, and then I can start disconnecting the return line and the output line and all that jazz. But before I do any of that, I have to go make sure the engine is at TDC. So I'm gonna go do that now. And I don't think I need to show that really. Um, but uh, yeah. Uh, one of my previous videos, somebody posted saying, all you need to do is just disconnect this wire right here. I disagree and this is why. If you wanna crank the motor over manually uh, using the pulley in the front, and you don't make sure that coil in this thing is discharged somehow, you will fire this engine over. Because once, once the contact makes contact with one of these cylinders and there's a charge inside the sucker, that's your coil right there. So you gotta remove that from the, situ or from the equation. Um, so the only way to make sure that that sucker isn't going to go firing on you is to actually disconnect the whole cap because otherwise you're going to run the risk of it turning over and if you're holding on to a wrench right here when this sucker f spins around really fast <laughs> say goodbye to your wrist man that is going to be a nightmare so what I'll do is just set her over like that um, the cap will turn slightly, probably, but should be okay in there. Actually, let's see. It'd be nice to just set it up like that there. So now I can go back around with my 5 8 and I basically just want to make sure. Where's my light? I want to make sure that I'm at top dead center down there so is it five eighths yeah all right so oh yeah all right well I'm gonna do that without filming because I can't do it one-handed and I need uh, I need my bar on the end of this so I'm gonna do that you guys don't need to see that you you know what that is so all right, so if you can see the timing mark down there is on zero, so she's at TDC. Basically, the reason you want to do this at TDC so the you want to do this at top is because inside the engine, right back behind uh, here, off of the camshaft, there is a lobe that um, is a concentric lobe that pumps the gas or the fuel pump once every 180 degree rotation so if you're at top dead center that lobe is away and it's not pushing the, the 
the rod, the connecting rod from the camshaft to the fuel pump, it's up as far as it'll go. And then the next step we have is we're gonna remove that bolt right there. You see a bolt head. I will take that bolt out and put it in the front and cinch it down gently so it holds that push rod out of the way. And then um, I'll be able to remove the pump. But before I do any of that, I gotta go through and deal with those hoses first. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. I'm trying to think of the best way to do that. I could put the old, the new hose on first, or I think what I'll do is I'll plug the old hose at the bottom, and then when I get everything ready, I'll just do a quick swap at the top, hopefully. And uh, hopefully I won't get gasoline everywhere. That's gonna suck. I'm gonna be wearing gasoline perfume for a day or two, probably. <laughs> so, anyway, all right, so. Where we're at. And by the way, I'm taking you guys' advice, and I'm not going to change the, um, the flange gasket or the plate gasket. I'm not going to mess with that. So um, that, if you're wondering, is uh, so. There's, if you see that bolt right there, there's a plate that that is holding onto the block. And I'm not going to take that off. I'm just going to leave it. So I'm only changing the pump and the pump gasket. So, step now is to remove this line. And, well, clamp it, undo it, plug it, and then hopefully she'll just sit there and not leak on me. And then I can start doing the rest of the lines and stuff. Remove these. I'll get this fitting off over here and uh, get that line off so all three lines will be disconnected and then I'll start with the bolts. Alright so that wasn't too bad. I found that if I clamped it up here at the top on the inlet uh, that worked better because I was running into whoops I was running into some issues where the clamp here was was running I was running out of space against the frame man I wish I could do a frame off on this car right now I gotta just dry this off and make sure she's not gonna be dripping but she should be okay I've put that bolt in there and I tightened this down so it should be all right and now that's kind of nice and loose and easy to get out of the way. So I'll just get the other ones off of there and then I can start getting the pump out. So I wanna show you guys what I'm doing here. I have two wrenches. Um, one's a 5 8 on the fitting side. And then the other is an 11 16 which fits perfectly on the, uh, or well, on the fitting itself. So, when I had just this one wrench on the fitting, and yes, I'm not using line wrenches, I'm sorry, but I have never used line wrenches for any of the line work I've done, and I've never stripped a bolt or a nut, so. Um, anyways, what I found works really well is that if you only use the one wrench here and you push up, what you're going to do is you're going to apply a fair amount of torque to this whole pump and the whole pump was actually flexing slightly which is obviously really bad so it looked like it was just going to tear this whole fitting out of the pump so i thought hey i got a surface there let me throw a wrench on that and what's cool is that then all you need to do is basically pull these guys together and squeeze them together like that and you'll break that nut loose back there 
I don't think you can see it, but now I don't even need this guy on here, so I can take that out of the equation. And now this guy's nice and loose, so, so I can loosen that fitting nut up. I'll probably have to use a wrench, I guess, but also these are not high pressure lines. This one is, obviously, because the pressure from the pump gets pushed through this fit out, out, this outlet. So that's high pressure, which is why it's all a hard line to the carb. But this supply line and the return lines are low pressure. So you don't need the, the other kinds of clamps that chew up your hoses and stuff. So just use these supplied clamps and they'll be fine. So, all right. So I'm gonna leave this bolt in place and I'm going to remove that bolt and I'm going to use that bolt to gently put into the front of the motor to hold the um, rod that rubs against this. So that is going to be the next step. Whoop. What I got here is I have a nice long extension and a 7 16 inch socket on the end of it. And oh look, I have a little buddy, a little friend. <laughs> and inside there right down in there you can see that bolt way back in there that is so that's the first bolt I'm gonna remove of the two I'm gonna leave the other bolt in place while I remove this bolt and put this bolt in the front to hold the connecting rod out of the way all right so these are the two bolts this one is the plug bolt and this one is the long fuel pump bolt that I was just showing you. So you can see how much longer. They're the same thread size, but the head sizes are different. I will, uh, well, interestingly, removing this was, I didn't even need a wrench. I could have just stuck this on there and started turning it. It was actually loose already. So that's kind of concerning. You can see somebody put a little bit of sealer on it, but I don't think that was helping very much. So I'm going to put this in the front, gently tighten it up, and I'm not going to torque it hard because I don't want to damage the connecting rod for the fuel pump. I just want to hold it up out of the way, and so I'll put that in there. Let's show you where that is. I'm going to put that in this hole, and I don't think, I don't know, see my fingers down there? So I can feel it binding in the hole, but it's still turning. It may bind on that thread locker. I'll probably, oh, yep, I think she's tight. So I'll use a wrench on it just gently. And so then the next step will be to remove the second bolt and pull the pump out. Sweet, so the old pump is tight. I find that getting it in and out or out this this way right through here is probably well is the easiest way for me um, also when you remove the hard line connection a lot of fuel comes out a lot more than it does any other direction so something to something to keep in mind um, yeah this is ugh, it's getting all over me this is the old pump. You see the original paint. Oops, the original paint there. Well, the paint from the rebuild, I should say. For all I know, this could be the original pump, but I doubt it. I don't think they painted these on the car. Um, so she's not a bad pump, but I'm not keeping it. I'm chucking it. So there's that. I'll probably keep the fitting off of there and uh, just kind of cover that gas up. Hulk on. Okay, so now what do we got? I just need to clean up around the flange, make sure there's no gasket and gas or oil on it. So I'm going to do a little cleaning, probably get some naphtha to make sure that's clean. And then we'll start putting the new pump in there. Okie dokie. So what I like to use for cleaning surfaces prior to using any kind of um, gasket uh, maker type stuff is I like to use naphtha. Naphtha evaporates and it does not leave anything behind. Um, 
it's pretty amazing. The sh this stuff is <laughs> highly toxic. Don't breathe this. This will freaking destroy your brain. Make sure that you're in a well ventilated area. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna use a piece of paper towel. I'm gonna get a little naphtha on there. Doot, 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 doot. And then I'm gonna go boop, 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 boop. What I'm gonna do first is use this clean piece of cloth with naphtha, clean that sucker off. I will put a little bit of gasket maker on the surface, line this up and stick it to it. And then I'll put a thin layer of this on this side also. And then I will put the fuel pump back in the car. But also before I do all of that, I'm going to take this piece of cloth with some naphtha on it still, we'll use the other side where it's clean still. And then I'm gonna use that in there on the flange, which you can see kind of shiny. The one thing that looks clean back in there. <laughs> um, also, I wanted to point out that this tie rod end right here, gasoline pours all over this when you um, when you remove that line, the hard line. Fuel will just dump all over that, which is not good, obviously, because it'll soak into that and um, probably ruin the grease that's underneath that cap so I mean granted you can use that to, as a cleaning method to clean that cap off but um, I don't think that's good for that it's probably going to cause some sort of problem in years to come but maybe not I don't know I just wanted to point that out all right so coming back next after we get the pump sort of back up in there I guess all right, so I want to show you, this is why I do it on the clean new surfaces too. That is all from this surface right here. Just the silver flange area. So as you can see, there's some grease, there's some probably fine pieces of dust and dirt and whatnot stuck to that. So really important to get that off. There's also going to be oil on here um, just to protect it. So really important to you know, just uh, make sure that that's clean. So now I'm gonna, I'm just gonna fold this around this way and use this side, this side to clean the flange. Okay, so I've got this uh, gasket on here and I've got one bolt through there. I've put some sealant around the threads of the bolt so when I screw that in, to the hole back in there. Uh, she should be good to go. That's all cleaned off, so it should be fine. I don't think a whole lot of oil really gets up around that, but... So, now, I also have the hoses pre-attached to the bottom. I figured that'd be an easier way to do it. So now comes the tricky part. I'm gonna need two hands, but I'm gonna work this sucker back up in there, and should be getting her reattached in there next. All right, you guys, let's see. Okay, so now I've got that back in there. I've got the bolts torqued down. And what I'm gonna do next, before I do anything else, is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna rotate the engine a few times just to make sure I don't have any binding or anything crazy going on because I do not want to fire the car up after all this and have it explode or something crazy happen because I didn't put it together right or something. So, I'm going to do that now, and then I'm going to hook up all of the connections, and we'll start with the hard line there, and then we should be good to go and fire up and test her and make sure she actually pumps gas again still. So, yay, getting closer. Well, guys, i got a serious problem here. Look at that. This fitting is attached to this pump in a way that's different than the last one. Um, this fitting is at about a 30 or 40 degree angle to the flange, and this pump, well, I guess it's at a similar angle. Maybe there's, maybe I didn't get that put in there right? I don't know. Um, so that's at about a 20 degree angle, I'd say. It's at a 90 to this one, so 
is that all the way on? Yeah, looks like that's on. This is, there's, see, this is what I'm talking about. See how, whoops, see how fuel just drips out of there right onto that? That's not good. And this isn't good. I don't know what I'm gonna do. I don't have any pipe bending stuff and this doesn't even look like it's gonna go back far enough. I'm gonna probably have to take that hard line and this is gonna suck. Well, I'm probably just gonna have to take that hard line off and tweak the end of it down there. All right, so I think I've spent more time trying to align this hard line with that fitting than I have the entire rest of the time installing this thing so far. Um, I had to loosen up the other end up there at the carb and then do some finagling because the angle of this attachment here is different than on the original or at least on the old pump. I'm hoping that I have enough uh, tightness in this thing now because I had to loosen it slightly so I'm worried that I'm gonna get some fuel leak uh, what a job so next up is to connect the other end of this fitting at the carburetor hopefully it's all close enough and I don't have to finagle with bending the line up there and then after that I will reconnect the rubber hoses and I need uh, there's a problem here which you can see this this big hose rubs right on this thing, so I'm going to have to put some hose or something around this to protect it, because otherwise that's just going to rub right through on the frame and spray oil or gas everywhere, so, yay. I think that this may not be the right pump, because these hoses, I think these two fittings on the bottom should point more towards the front of the car, and then... This fitting here, this one, that needs to be different too, but whatever. I'm making it work. All right. Okay, you guys, let's see what do we got here. All right, so uh, the two lines are connected. Uh, the This one is the input line going to the pump. The red clamp is the return line. And I finally did get everything up under there correctly attached tightened up everything looks good so um, I've also made some adjustments on those hoses as you can see that one is a little bit further away now and I've got it held back but I think I'm still gonna have to shorten that hose a little bit that would solve that problem however I'm very reluctant to uh, to open up the cooling system. However, I think the reason why I'm having some coolant overflow issues over there is because I think I've got too much fluid. So I'm going to uh, extract a little of that fluid out of there, lower it down closer to the cold line, and then uh, reconnect this guy and try firing it up. All right, so appears to be coming out of this point here, which is kind of what I expected. So now I'm going to have to figure out how to deal with that. I'm going to have to clamp off the input line. Oh yeah, I put, uh, put a piece of hose here to keep that from rubbing through, hopefully. Well, now I see what 76 Vet was talking about. Boy, these are crap. I'll tell you what. I'm really glad that I saved my old or yeah, my old one. Because the pin on this thing, the little thing that the hose is attached to on the inside, is inside here. Which is why this is too full and none of the fluid has gone back into the engine. Beep. So yeah, lovely crap. Okie dokie. So, I uh, found her up. And she's idling high because she's still uh, cold. And took a look under there. See, everything is looking good. That's dust, by the way.
So, uh, we're all done with that. Fired it up. Runs great. No leaks. Yay! So that's good. Woot woot. Brand new fuel pump. All that. Brand new lines. Everything good. I did test the, uh, the, um, Teflon tape to make sure it didn't dissolve in gasoline, and it's fine. So, um, I'm just not going to worry about it. I did do something else uh, here. I sprayed that black. Actually, I picked off a few of the nasty bits, and then I used some of my favorite paint as of late, this uh, Rust-Oleum Appliance Epoxy. I'm not advertising this, but I'm just saying this stuff is awesome. Um, that is also what I used for all these brackets for the AC kit, and I used it down here um, on all my parts under there. And that looks so much better. I mean, you step back and look at the hood. There we go. That just looks really nice. Uh, so, anyway, uh, looks like it may rain soon, so I might get to drive her in the rain for the first time. Uh, I did check to make sure that my wiper blades are in good shape. They're okay. I'm gonna have to go get some refills. I have not yet checked to see if these even work. I, I think that they do. I don't see why they wouldn't. Um, let's see, what else? I still need to figure out a way to keep this cap down before I go anywhere. I have an idea to maybe make a 3D printed part that will be like a butterfly uh, screw type thing where it'll kind of go in and we'll thing on the inside of that that'll hold this down and you could screw down a little wing nut or something I don't know but at least this has a hose on it so that's better than nothing for now um, I also need to figure out a way to reroute these guys because they're uh, they were getting cooked on the exhaust down there I also want to take these tabs off because I don't need those for anything at least as far as I know. If you think I need to keep these for something, let me know. I think they were for the old AC. Uh, by the way, if you're wondering why there's so much space right here, that's because uh, the old AC is gone and it's right over there. So, yeah. Anyways, oh, I need to put all these guys back here. Get over there. I get my little rubber protector on there. There we go. That's good. So, she's good to go for now, anyway. There's a lot of tidying up I need to do. Um, and I have some other things to check uh, here and there. But uh, she's doing pretty pretty well right now. So, yeah, I love that. That black really fixed that up. I mean, that doesn't look bad at all. I can live with that. And uh, one of the downsides of not having a garage is this shit. I know, you're probably hating me right now. <laughs> I'm hating me too, dude. I need a garage so badly. This, is, this really sucks. And it's because of this gigantic Palo Verde tree right here. I hate that tree. I mean, I love trees, but I hate that tree. You know what I mean. So, anyway, there we go. I'll, uh, I'll get this all tidied up and put the cover back on her. Not that it really helps all that much. I need a proper cover. I guess I should order one. Um, here comes the fucking ice cream truck, which drives me insane for some fucking reason. So, I will see you guys next time.